my dearest brothers and sisters. Vision the can speaking. I greet you in peace and love. Let's talk about individualism versus collectivism first. We'll get to unity consciousness later in this message. People like individualism may argue that individualism equals freedom and that it has led to a free and prosperous West. We also point out that collectivism means that people's rights and self-expression and individuality get trampled on, that people get forced into a societal mould. They may say that collectivism means the Soviet Union, and that it failed, and that it wasn't a good place to live in. On the other hand, people who like collectivism may argue that everything goes to hell if people just individualistically do what they wish, as indeed the individualistic West has been declining of late. Furthermore, it's lonely in a sense that if everyone is just individually doing what they want. So, which is better, individualism or collectivism? Well, if half the population prefers one thing, and the other half of the population prefers the other thing, then usually both are flawed in a way. If one of these concepts actually was simply correct, then it wouldn't have become such a discussion. Firstly, us Pleiadians don't really use the concepts of individualism versus collectivism. Instead, we value unity consciousness and freedom. So we have the freedom that on Earth comes from individualism, and the group harmony and group prosperity that on Earth comes from unity consciousness. Meanwhile, we don't have the oppression or stifling of expression that can come from collectivism, because we're pro-freedom. We don't have the destructive selfishness that can come from individualism, because we have unity consciousness. So, we wouldn't dream of forcing someone to conform, or forcing someone to serve a state, in the way that Earth collectivist societies may do. Yet this works out because our unity consciousness means that people don't do the evil selfish things that happen in individualistic society. Of these two things, freedom should be self-explanatory. We have no taxes and barely any laws, this works for us because we have a relatively high level of consciousness. And our society is good enough that people feel happy to volunteer and contribute. What does unity consciousness really mean though? Because it's nice to call people brother or sister, or to say things like, we are all one. But that's just the surface level. What does it actually mean? Well, unity consciousness means that you perceive others as being part of yourself, to at least a large extent. It doesn't mean that you're literally unable to dis distinguish you from others. But it does mean that, for example, if others are suffering, you feel at least to an extent the same kind of motivation to help that you would feel if your shoulder was wounded. Now, a unity consciousness person might not feel the urge to help others to quite the same extent as treating a physical wound on their own body. But it's not that different either. To a unity consciousness person, Ignoring the suffering of others just literally doesn't make any sense. In the same sense that ignoring a wound on your own physical body wouldn't make any sense. Now, many people will agree with this definition, but the problem is that many people, to many people, this is just a rational concept. And rationally understanding this isn't yet unity consciousness. To achieve unity consciousness, you need to embody it. From the definition, it's not immediately obvious how we would go about embodying this. Sure, a high consciousness person can just be, and automatically embody unity consciousness, without effort. However, most people receiving this message aren't yet in unity consciousness. So we'll suggest a way of behaving that can serve as one possible stepping stone towards unity consciousness. One possible stepping stone towards unity consciousness is who you are is first determined by your own reincarnating soul. So first, you, sh you should listen to your soul. Who you are is second determined by you being an Earth human. So second, you should work to benefit Earth humans. Who you are is third determined by your mind. So third, you should work to benefit yourself. For example, most likely you are more spiritually advanced than the average Earth person because you are tuning into these messages. Probably your soul, who you could see as the real you, nudged your mind and orchestrated events so that you woke up, at least partially. 
So who you are is first determined by your own reincarnating soul, which is why you're most likely more spiritually advanced than the average person in your world. Second, who you are is determined by the fact that you are an Earth human. After all, if you were born in one of the reptilian worlds, where reptilians harm each other for their own benefit, most likely you would do the same thing too. Except perhaps if your soul nudged you to be a higher consciousness person than the people around you. But if your soul didn't nudge you in one way or the other, it's quite unlikely that your mind would, would have decided to start behaving in a very unreptilian like way. And also, if you were born in a Palladian world, most likely you would be a reasonably typical Palladian, except perhaps if your soul strongly nudged you into a non-standard direction. Most Palladians are Palladian-like, and most Arcturians are Arcturian-like, most Reptilians are Reptilian-like, most Earth humans are Earth human-like. So a being whose birth planet more strongly affects who they are than their own rational mind. You see few beings behave in a way that's atypical for their planet, purely because that's what their mind decided, except if their soul nudged their mind in that direction. So, who you are is first determined by your soul, second by you being an Earth human, and third determined by your mind. Correspondingly, it only makes sense to first listen to your soul, to second try and benefit Earth humans as a whole, and third to try and benefit yourself. So what does that look like? Well, first listen to either your soul or your intuition which comes from your soul. Don't confuse emotions and unconscious beliefs with intuition. Or if you are able to do either, listen to your guides or follow what resonates. Probably your soul will want you to dedicate a certain amount of time and energy to spiritual practice and self-healing, and a certain amount of time and energy to helping others or being kind to others and a certain amount of time and energy to things that you find fun or not that nourish you. And likely your soul will give you some guidance and advice here without micromanaging everything in your life. Second, for the time that your soul wants you to help others, go do whatever you think is most needed. Be the change that you want to see in the world, even if it's difficult. And third, for your personal time, just do what you find fun and what nourishes you. And remember that most likely your soul wants you to have a reasonable amount of fun time and relaxation. Most likely your soul doesn't want you to spend every moment of the day volunteering to help humanity. You can see how a society would tremendously benefit if everyone would behave like this. Because after all, most Earth people are doing the third thing on the list, more or less all of the time. Where they just do what benefits them individually, and perhaps a few loved ones. And most people aren't listening to their soul, and thus aren't living a, on a, an authentic life. On the other hand, most Pleiadians understand that they, who they are is determined more by the fact that they were born in the Pleiades than in by their own rational mind. Hence Pleiadians understand the importance of protecting, maintaining and further improving their society. Because their society is determinative, to ourselves and to the other people in our society. We're not under the illusion that it's primarily our personal intelligence and ambition that is re the reason why we are the way we are. Instead we know that we are the way we are because we grew up in the Pleiades. This is why our society works with no taxation and practically no laws. Because if people to an extent identify with their society and their group, if they have unity consciousness, then they are happy to do volunteer work and treat other people with kindness. Some people might point out that the average Earth human already sees themselves as an American, or a Christian, or a left-winger, for example. I wouldn't quite categorize that as unity conscious, because while those people may see some, pe some people as being part of themselves to an extent, they typically see other people as very much not being a part of themselves. It's not unity consciousness to include the people you like, and exclude the people you don't. In fact, Hating evil people is, isn't unity consciousness. Sure, wanting evil people to be stopped is consistent with unity consciousness, but hating them is not. So we're near the end of this message. But there are very few people who, have, who already embody unity consciousness. This message may not have been too useful. That said, most people don't yet embody unity consciousness. 
There's a huge difference between rationally understanding the concepts of unique consciousness and embodying. This applies to many spiritual principles, by the way. Rationally understanding them is useful. We usually have to do a significant amount of spiritual practice to actually embody them. And embodying them is where the real gold is. The majority doesn't yet embody unity consciousness. I think this stepping stone can be a useful tool. Basically, listen to your soul first. Work to benefit humanity second. And do what benefits yourself third. That said, keep in mind that your soul likely wants you to spend some amount of time having fun and nourishing yourself. So you don't need to spend every waking moment doing volunteer work. In fact, if you're in a tough situation... Your soul may very well want you to put your own air on your own air mask first. Listening to your soul first and working to benefits humanity second is, I think, one possible good stepping stone towards unity consciousness. It is not the only possible path. Doing a whole bunch of meditation is another path that can lead to embodied unity consciousness. But this is a possible path. I respect you very much and you in my thoughts every single day. With all my love, your star brother, McCann.